So you ready to have some joy this afternoon? Ready to be empowered this afternoon? So what it, last month was my, my birthday month, so how many know that the celebrations are always to be had? And, uh, and it was also Pastor Stacy Capaldi's birthday as well. So what do two single girls do when, you know, they're, they, when it's birthday time? You go, and we went and had some fun in Baja, <laughs> right? Come on now. Now, sometimes we go to Baja for missions, right? Missions, Pastor, so I'm happy to uh, get you signed up for our next Baja mission trip, which is happening in October. So I'll see you after service. You're interested in that. Uh, but this was a mission of fun, and sometimes we need to have a mission of fun as well. So we had a great Great, just girls afternoon, or a couple of days of just going out and having fun. And, uh, we, you know, we, being the girls that we are, uh, preferred to have someone else drive. How many of you like to have someone else drive? The guys all say, I'd rather drive myself. But, you know, it, anyways, right? So, so, so we, we found a driver, and the driver's like, it was just the only thing that she asked. I said, do you guys have a global entry or a century card, right? Because when you're land crossing in Mexico, there's two, well, there's three ways that you can do it. One, you can walk. Sounds very exciting, uh, n which I, you know, it could work. Uh, number, number two is the very slow lane, which means sometimes that lane is not, uh, so fast, right? That's the opposite of slow, right? So, so it, 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 you're, you could be in that line for a couple of hours. Sometimes it can go quick, but obviously, usually not. <laughs> usually it's a, it's a slow lane for a reason. But the century lane is what's known as the fast lane. You can get through it within 20 minutes or so. So, you know, but the, the, the only caveat was that we needed to make sure that we had global. We're like, oh, yeah, check, check, check. We've traveled all over the world. You know, we've both had our, our global entry card. Not a problem done. It. In fact, Pastor Stacy's traveled with her global entry card all over the world and all the things, right? So here we go. We get up to the line for the Border Patrol agent to, you know, check us and clear us to go on our merry way. So she, when, the, when we turn, the, she turns to us and says, she looks at the driver and looks at me and says, you two have obviously used your global entry card, haven't you? Oh, yeah, of course. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, there's three of us in the car, and she's saying, you too. So uh, she's like, and you have obviously not used your global entry card. You're like, uh, it's about to go down right now. <laughs> Right, and so it ended up happening that she's like, you've used it in air travel, but you have never used it in land travel, and therefore your global entry card is not activated, so guess what? You get to go to secondary. And we're thinking, what the? I mean, what, I mean how, how would you even know if you're using your card that you wouldn't be able to use it for land? So here we go on our way to secondary, and guess where we end up? The detention cell. So we are in jail while they are investigating. I know, we went to jail. Confession, awakened pastors go to jail. <laughs> May not be the last, no, I'm just kidding. Right, so, so here we are in jail while they are now raffling through all of our stuff to make sure that we're not bringing anything crazy back, uh, you know, smuggling God knows what. And, uh, it, but obviously we're legal, obviously all these things. Thank God that everything was clear and we were able to get on our way after spending some time in jail. <laughs> And while I'm sitting in this jail cell, which is something I, you know, you just never know as a missionary, like, what you're actually going to walk into. But, you know, I just didn't usually, like, go to jails to minister to people. I'm usually not the one who's in the jail. <laughs> like, huh, okay, this is different. This is what it feels like. And I felt the voice of God say it like this. I felt him say, Shelly, just like many of my people, they are at, they, they, they've received my power and they've received my authority and they operate it into a certain degree. But there is an area that is inactive in their lives that requires activation. Because how do you know that power and authority is only as good as you actually using it? So the title of my message today is Activated, and I believe that God wants to activate you in kingdom realities today that you would not back away or shy away from things that God has called you to. 
that we've got to be a people. And I'm so thankful for our pastors, the courageous leadership of our pastors that run to storms and do not run from storms. I, I'm so grateful for pastors that will stand the truth. And the reality is there's lots of talk right now in society about mandates and things that we should be doing and all these different things. But the reality is, is that we have a greater mandate to be inoculated and we need to be inoculated with the truth of God. And I am grateful that we have truth bearing pastors that will actually stand and inoculate us with truth infusions. Honestly, that's the best, the best, if you will, prevention from deception is going to be taking in truth, taking in truth infusion. So you ready for a truth infusion today? So just like that card was not activated in land travel, the same is true if you think of your credit card. You receive a credit card in the mail, right? You receive it, has your name on it, it's your account, it is your right to do whatever way that you want to do with it to use it or to abuse it, right? But you, if you were to take the card from the mailbox and you were to go down to your favorite department store and try to swipe it, guess what's going to happen? Access is going to be denied. Why? Because you fail to activate what has been given to you. So God wants to activate. What is that word? Activation is, re, is what is required to have what has been given to you released or received. Right, to be activated means to be made active. Pretty simple, <laughs> right? Uh, to, be, to be activated means to be, to be placed on active duty. Turn to your neighbor. We're in a time of prayer. This is our prayer series. Say, you are called to active duty. Right? I, I heard you. I heard you. So that means our, 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 our emerge prayer, our cherished prayer is going to go through the roof this next week. Come on now. Tuesday and Thursday, right? Right? So, so we've been activated, and I love it. It says that it was to set in motion with the necessary personnel and equipment. So God, friends, has called you, right, with the necessary equipment to go forth with his power and his authority. And just as I have a key for my car that is sitting in another room right now, it's inactive. Why? Because I am not currently using it. I actually have to put it in the ignition. I actually have to start the vehicle in order for that key to be effective. In order for that key to be active, it requires me to use the key. Right? And the same is true when it comes to the kingdom of God. I love how Jesus, he pulls his disciples aside after a time of ministry, and he says to them, he says, who do men say that I am, right? You know the passage in Matthew 16, right? And, and, and Peter responds to him and says, but you are the, you, you are the, you are the Christ. You are, you are the son of the, of the living God, right? And, and so there was a revelation that came in. How do you know it's, it's very common that we can see the kingdom of God? But actually seeing the miraculous, every week in, in, in Awakened Church, you will find people getting saved. You will find people getting healed. You will find people getting delivered. You will find financial uh, miraculous provisions coming, right? We hear that week in, week out. But how many of you know you can see it, but you may not always enter into it? So we've got to enter into kingdom things. How do we enter into kingdom things? Just as... Peter had the revelation, number one, how do we enter? By revelation of who Jesus is, right? When we know who he is. And then number two, revelation of who we are, right? We are sons and daughters of the Most High, right? That there's, there's no one greater than Jesus. There's no one greater than our Father who is in heaven. So we have been, that's who you are. You are a son. You are a daughter, which means you have rights as a son and a daughter, and he's given you tools to the kingdom to be able to advance his kingdom, to be able to advance, right? A son, the meaning of son literally means to be a builder of his father's house. So you as a son and daughter are a builder of your father's house. And then Jesus takes it a step further in the next verse. And he answered, and he said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, a.k.a. revelation from my Father in heaven. Verse 18, and I tell you that you are Peter, 
And on this rock or on this revelation, this truth that you can stand on, revelation is a truth that you can stand on, I will build my church, also known as Ecclesia, right? So his Ecclesia, and he says, and what? And the gates of hell or Hades will not overcome. It's interesting, the word gates literally in, in, in the Greek means pule. You heard me, right? Poo. Pule. <laughs> So you could, you, could, you could put it this way, the poo of hell will not prevail against you. Come on now. I just changed your mindset and how you see that. Right, so, so there's the, 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 the basically, right, the, 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 the hell is like a place that's trying to prevail, but God says, no, 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 the junk of the enemy will not prevail against you. The junk of the enemy will not overcome you, but you're knowing who you are, you will prevail. You will be victorious. Why? Because of you know who he is and you know who you are. Amen? Now, what's interesting thing, it, Jesus is calling. <laughs> yes, Jesus, I hear you, Lord. Uh, the word ecclesia, is, is, it's not actually a religious term. Do you know what it actually means? That is selected ones. Do you know that Ecclesia was actually a term that was adopted by the Greeks to actually, uh, it was actually about political and governmental matters, meaning that there, were, there was a group of people who, who, who had been summoned and gathered together to govern the affairs of the city. Friends, I am telling you that God in his sovereignty has gathered us together as a wakened church, not to sit on the sidelines of the governing affairs of our city, but to be in the forefront governing the affairs of our city, that we are to rise up. This is not just a, a, a casual thing, but this is actually governing authority that God has given to us. Do you ever think of yourself, you are a governor? Right, we're, we're, in a, we're in a governing recall right now, but did you know that you are a governor? Turn to your neighbor and say, you are a governor. <laughs> and you can do a good job too, <laughs> right, through your prayers, right? So, so there's something to be said. So number one, we enter into the kingdom of God by revelation of who Jesus is, revelation of who we are. Number two, we must be activated with the things that God has given to us which means we have to engage. So number one, we are activated with kingdom authority. God has given you authority. And I love our album, Authority. It's been on repeat for I don't even know how many weeks. I just love the song, Authority, your authority rising in me, your authority that has been given to me, right? So there's something to be said about authority. But authority in word will not produce results. Authority must be something that we actually use, that we actually implement in our daily lives. So I was, I, I, you know, you know, I'm a missionary. So how many, anyone from the Philippines out here? Anyone? Got a few? Give me a shout. All right, all right. I love it. Philippines. So we're in the Philippines. It's a, it's a, a beautiful, beautiful nation of many, many, many islands. I don't know, it's a, a, a few thousand islands. And we, in, in order to get from one island to another, you have the island hop. A lot of fun, <laughs> depending on which island you go and what's, you know, what's going on. So anyway, so we're, we're getting on, we're, we get on this boat. We charter a boat to go to an island that we had never been to. Three single ladies, all from the United States. We didn't have any guys. You know, we were still waiting for those applications. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so we had to go. What are we going to do? Like sit around? I can't go because I'm not married yet. Well, come on now. Just get going, get moving, right? Come on, I'm not going to wait to live my life. I'm going to live my life right now, and he's going to find me along the way. So that's just how it works. Come on. Just saying, just saying. I got all the vibe happening right here, right? <laughs> love you. Love, love, love. So, so here we are. Like, we just got a word from a, from a pastor of a pastor of a pastor who said you should go to this island. We're like, yeah, what the heck? We're, we're adventurous enough. You might need to be like part crazy to be missionary. I don't know. We'll see. So, so we get on this boat. And as we're on this boat, we chartered it, right? So we paid for it. There's, there's a, you know, notice there's this box that's in the middle of the boat. And I'm thinking, what the heck is that box? And so I lean over to my friend. I'm like, hey, what's in that box? And she's from, she was a missionary based in the Philippines. And she's like, oh, that's a, that's a deceased person. And I'm like, what? 
the heck? So we paid for someone else's relative to get to an island. What, is this a setup? Did they just send us to just like cart this person over to the next island? What's going on here? And then I look a little bit further, and, and you know, because there were several people that was on the boat. Next person that's on the boat is a police officer. And I'm thinking, okay, this is getting just a little bit weird. So now we got a dead body and we got a police officer. I don't know if I should feel like comfortable or I don't know. I'm just feeling like a little bit confused as what was going on. So here we are going, uh, going along, you know, living my best life and, you know, just like crying out for the nations and trying to ignore like whatever this is going on. And then we see this massive boat that's 10 times the size of the boat that we are in. And I'm thinking, hmm, that's interesting. And then it got even more real because then the police officer directs our boat to get close to that one. And I'm thinking, uh, what? What's, what's going on right now? And so the police officer decides that he was going to pull over the boat. Like, you know how police pull over cars? Well, this police officer decided that he was going to pull over a boat that is 10 times the size of our boat. And I'm thinking, hmm, we have no idea what's in this boat. I wonder if it's a good idea to pull over a bigger boat not knowing what's on the inside of it. And guess what's on the inside, friends? No joke pirates, legit pirates. And I'm thinking, uh, am I in a movie right now? Like, what the heck is going on? So now we've got pirates to our right, 10 times the size of our little boat, and we got this little police officer with this little pistol. It looks so cute. And I'm thinking, what in the heck is this little pistol going to do against this massive boat? And he just went up there like just a bold terrier, and, and he commanded them to lower their bridge, and he walked right up on that boat, and I'm thinking, oh, no, he didn't. I cannot believe that he did that. He goes straight up on the boat, and guess what he does? He decides to pull out some collateral and bring a pirate onto our ship. So now we've got a dead body, we've got a police officer, and we've got a pirate. And I'm thinking, can we add anything else on this boat right now? Like, is this, like, really for real? So then you think that that's, like, kind of crazy? Well, this police officer with his itty-bitty pistol that's taking on this massive ship decides, like, we are actually taking this man on collateral because this ship is going to come with us, too. And so now we've got a dead body, we got a police officer, we got a pirate on our boat, and now we are actually hauling in a pirate ship. Yeah, you heard me right. We took on a pirate ship, and you're thinking, who in the world does this? This is crazy. And then, sure enough, like, these guys all complied, and I'm thinking, what are these, like, pirates, like, with broken guns or something? Or, like, what kind of pirates are these guys? Right? Not knowing, but what it was is this police officer understood his authority to take on a giant. So my question to you, friends, is you hear the term authority, but are you willing to take on a giant that stands in your way? Are you willing to utilize the authority that God has given to you? You know, yesterday I, I went for a, a, a walk and it was probably silly because it was like pretty hot. There was a heat advisory apparently. I didn't get the memo. So I, was, I was already out there. And there's this small trail. And if I go back, I'm going to have to backtrack. But right in front of me is this massive like beehive. And it's like they're buzzing around and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, all right, so which direction am I going to go? I can go what appears to be the easier way. Go away from them. It's already super hot all the things and go in this direction over here and go the long way back home or I can go straight through and just deal with it. And I just said, all right, Jesus, on three, one, two, three, all eyes on him. And I just went and I ran for it, right? Come on, thank God, no bee stings, praise the Lord. Miracles happen, I'm telling you, right? But, but you know, it, 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 is it in us to go towards storms? Is it in us to go towards things? And it's often it's so easy that we want to back the truck up and wait for someone else to do the heavy lifting for us. Or will we rise up? And I believe this is a season and an hour that we must rise up in our authority. We must rise up in the things in which God has given to us. We can't wait for someone else to do it. Let him pray. Let him pray. Let you pray. Let you declare. Sometimes we just don't have time. We don't, we don't have time to do those things. And why does God give us authority? Because he wants to give us the legal right to operate in supernatural power. 
right? So you have the legal right. You are, I've just told you, you're activated. You're a governor. You've been given the legal right to ap- operate in supernatural power. You don't have to wait for Pastor John to pray for healing. It's amazing what he does, and we love it, and we'll never stop it. But yet, you don't have to wait for that in order for you to get your breakthrough. Your breakthrough is actually already on the tip of your tongue. Will you let it go? Will you release your breakthrough? Will you rise up in the, in the authority that God has given to you? Right? I mean, if you, you really look at it, and I love Jesus, he gave his disciples. When he, he called, the Bible says in, in Matthew 10, verse 1, he calls his 10, 12 disciples to him. And when he calls his disciples, he doesn't just send them out and say, hey, boys, best of luck to you. Hope it works out. Try casting out devils. Try healing out the sick. But if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. No, that's not what he said. But what, it, but what did he do? He called them to himself. And then what did he do? He gave them. So I love that Jesus never commissions us to do something that he won't empower us to do. So whatever he calls you to do, he empowers you to do it. It's not just a calling, but there's an empowerment that comes. So he empowers them with what? Power, right? And with that power, what are they able to do? Cast out devils and heal the sick. What I love about that word power, it literally means jurisdiction. It literally means jurisdiction. So in other words, you ever wonder, I don't know about you, but like, what's my territory? Is it the whole United States? Gosh, that's overwhelming. (laughs) No, no big deal, right? Or is it, is it my community? Is it my house? Is it my car? Is it my bathroom? Sometimes I need to take authority over the, ba- the bathroom and make it clean, right? Come on, come on, right? Or, you know, what, what's, it, what's included in my jurisdiction? Well, what's included in my jurisdiction is trampling on the works of the enemy, right? Trampling over sickness. I'm not, uh-uh, I'm not putting up with sickness. No, sickness is not my portion, Right? Demonic oppression is not my portion. Depression is not my portion. Right? So I don't have to tolerate it. And here's the thing. What we tolerate will dominate. What we tolerate will dominate. So we got to stop tolerating some things. And we need to rise up in the authority that God has given to us to shift the atmosphere. And what I love is that Jesus goes, so the, the 12 go out and they do their thing. Like they are pumped out of their gills. Right? Then they come back, and in, in uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 1, one, one of my favorite passages that when God revealed this to me, right? It says, and after these things, what things? The 12 disciples, like crushing it all over the place, casting out devils, healing the sick, all the things. The Lord appointed 70 others also who went out and did the exact same thing of what was being done. That is incredible. Do you know that word appointed means to be lifted up into a higher level? It means to be lifted up, to be into a place to shift atmospheres. So Jesus says, I will appoint you. I will give you power. I will give you authority to bring transformation in the atmospheres that are around and about you. And these guys were just so pumped. It reminds me of when I was in, I was in Honduras and I took a mission team of youth. So if you're interested in missions, sign up, come see me. Missions at awakenchurch.com. No, no, no shame in my game to put a plug in for missions when I can right? And you'll see miracles and you'll have these same stories that I have if you're, if you're willing to go to the places that I've gone to, right? So, so here, these, here these guys are and it, all of a sudden it's, it's a crowd of like 200, 300 people. So we, you know, we do a typical service and the Holy Spirit just breaks out and you feel this wave of the Holy Spirit come in. But at the same time that the wave of the Holy Spirit came in, guess what? Almost every single person in that room all began manifesting at the same time and demons were manifesting everywhere. And you're thinking like, all right, let's go. And so the youth, their eyes were about like this big. They're like, what in the world? What do we do? I'm like, go for it. So they just all go and they're laying hands and they're commanding in the name of Jesus for these demons to come out. People are getting free, all the things. And I'm just being a leapfrog and jumping and helping to just kind of like get these things out and clean up house. Can I tell you, when we got in the van, these youth were so pumped out of their gills. There was one that was like, I was born for this. Of course you are. And you are born for this too. And there was so much energy in that van that if that van had no gasoline, I guarantee you we would got home. 
There is so much energy. Why? Because Jesus lifts you up to a higher place to be able to shift atmospheres that are around you. And here's something that I found to be true in all my missions experience, all my ministry experience, is that when we're willing to cross over resistance, we will see God come through. And not only will he come through, but there will be actually even an increased measure of authority. You want to grow in authority? Use the authority that you've got. It's not just a full measure that comes, but we actually have to use what God has given to us. The more we use it, the more that we see it. Going back to the pirate ship story, (laughs) very crazy. We get to the other side. There was a pastor when he saw us three ladies from America walking up. He had tears in his eyes, and he said, you don't understand. Two years ago, I was praying, and I saw in a vision three women, and he described us to the T, coming to our island, coming to this place. And can I tell you the salvations that came, the healings that came, the deliverance that came, and that would not have happened if we were not willing to actually press through. It would have been very easy to be like, ah, this is getting crazy. Turn the boat around. We're going back. But instead, we just kept going forward. Telling you, if you just keep going forward, you cross over the resistance, you will see God come through on the other side. So number one, activated with authority. Number two, activated through prayer. We've got to be a people who's quick to pray. We can't We can't be a people who's waiting for the man of God or the woman of God to be able to pray for us, but we've got to rise up, and there's different kinds of prayer that God will give us. Number one, there are what I would call, here's the thing, every time that you pray, it actually releases the power of God. Did you know that? So I know when I pray, I am engaging with heaven. And as I engage with heaven, guess what? The power of God is released. So if you will, your prayers is the fuel to the generator to which power is released. Your prayer is fuel. And I I think there's many times that we're waiting for someone to shift something for us. We're waiting. You know, I I remember there's a a man of God that I know, and he had this dream. And and, and, and in his dream, there's this, like, demon that was, like, jumping over his bed and kind of, like, antagonizing him and making fun of him and all the things. And he kept on asking Jesus, Jesus, take him away. Jesus, take him away. Jesus, take him away. And he was begging Jesus earnestly. Jesus heard him, and Jesus spoke to him and said, I can't, you have the authority to do it. I can't, you have the authority. So there's certain things that we're asking God for, and there's a place to ask, but we actually need to declare. We actually need to stand in the authority that he's given to us to shift those things. Come on. So instant, instant prayers is one of those things that you're, you're in a circumstance that you, have, you, you can't text, you can't tweet, you can't put a post on social media, you can't create a meme, but in that moment, you've got to do something, yeah. right? And so it, I was in Mongolia, and we were in this old, uh, rickety, I don't know why we got in it in the first place, just wanted to test our faith, I guess, uh, uh, elevator that was probably like 50 years old, it was meant to only house five people, and it probably can, they'd always cram in 10. And that time it happened to be the three of us were on the 15th floor. We need to get down to the first floor. Well, guess what happens from the 15th floor? We drop down and the lights out were suspended at the 10th floor. And you're thinking, uh, might be late to the meeting tonight. <laughs> and what happens? We, we all respond differently. So I have my one friend. He's just trying to he man it open. Like he's just like, ah, we're going to get out of here. And he's trying everything he can to use his physical strength. I didn't know what the heck else to do, so I just started praying in tongues. So ramandere, brebe, shikira, manda, ramata. Right? I didn't know what to do. So I'm just like, I'm going to default, and I'm going to pray in tongues. And then my other friend who is with me, he just started, in the name of Jesus, I command this thing to be opened in Jesus' name. And I don't know which one worked. Was it the muscling? Was it the tongues? Or was it the, the declaring? But that thing opened, and we looked. When that opened up, it was like, do we, the lights are on. Do we continue, or do we walk? We're like, we're walking. <laughs> <laughs> we'll walk the rest of the way down. So there's times in which we need to do and we need to have instant prayers, like in the moment, and God in the moment will shift those things in, a, in an instant. But then there's also what I would call constant prayers, and you can see this in Acts chapter 12, verse 5. 
and, and Peter was locked up in prison. And the Bible says that the church, the ecclesia, offered up prayers for Peter to be released. So if you will, think of the side of a house that has a spigot. At the, at the end of the spigot or the bottom of the spigot, there's usually like a water trough, right? It's like a, like a concrete uh, like kind of trough. And what do you notice if the house is old, that trough is usually not perfect. Why? Because the water has been beating on it continuously to where it no longer has its original form. So it's the same is true with constant prayers. I think so many times that we give up on praying before the victory comes in. I mean, you really think about it. It's almost like that. Have you ever seen the meme of the miner that like he's, he's digging and on the other side of it, it's like this massive mound of diamonds and he's been digging away and chiseling away and doesn't seem like anything's happening. So then he turns around and all the, and he leaves all the diamonds behind. It's almost like that when it comes to constant prayer. We've got to keep engaged in prayer. And I don't know about you, right? But the truth is sometimes we get bored in prayer. Right? I, I'm just being honest, right? We, we get bored praying the same thing and not seeing the victory come through. Yeah. So then it's just like, well, I don't know why it's not coming through. You know, Pastor Kenny, you pray for me. You bring the, I don't know what to do. Like, it's not breaking through. So now I'm going to default. I want the instant microwave approach. And I want someone to just in a, in a moment to do it. And then it's like, well, Pastor Kenny, you're obviously not spiritual now because it didn't break through. <laughs> come on. Come on, right? That, and so then now the shift is from me to now to the man or woman of God that I've asked to pray for me instead of actually being consistent in what God's asked me to do, to preach and to declare and to de all the things over the area in which we're praying over. Would we stand? Can we be consistent in our prayers to see breakthrough? Breakthrough is on the other side. The diamonds are on the other side, friends. I'm here to encourage you to rise up in the authority, to activate you in the authority, to activate you in the prayers that God has empowered you with, has activated you with, whether it be instant prayers, constant prayers. Third area of prayer that I saw is bold prayers. We've got to be a people that are courageous to pray bold, bold prayers. And we see bold prayers in Acts uh, 4 and 29. And this is interesting. Once again, you're just thinking like, man, these, these apostles, the tenacity, the, they, they didn't even count their lives dear to themselves. And, and, and they, they were beaten and released and they were forbidden to preach in the name of Jesus. And they, what was their response? They go in, the, in a heart of prayer and they say, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. How many you know that we've got to be a people who's not going to be, uh, we're not going to bow down to the threats that might be coming at us in society, but we've got to rise up and say, God, give me boldness. God, give me boldness. Cause me to be bold. Cause me to declare your word. God wants to activate you today, friends, in the next level of boldness, the next level of the constant, the next level of the instant, that you would see breakthrough come to your left and to your right, and for your friends, for your family, Families, for your communities, for the, for the United States of America, which we are fighting for, God will bring breakthrough as you stand, as you labor, as you engage with what God has given to you. And I'll, and I'll, I'll end with this, and then we're going to take a moment to, to just ha have some activation. But I love Jesus going back to Peter. He says to him, not only will the gates of hell not prevail against the church, the church will be built, the church will advance, the church will multiply. But he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I will give you the keys of the kingdom to bind and to loose. So there is power in binding and loosening. And oftentimes we wonder, what is binding? What is loosening? What does that mean? We just know the term like, I bind you in Jesus' name, right? But how about I loose the Holy Spirit to come into this place? I declare that this is an atmosphere that is conducive to the spirit of the living God. I declare in my home, I declare in my car, that it would be an atmosphere that is conducive to the spirit of the living God, that there would be a flow of heaven that would come, that when Jesus comes, when the Holy Spirit comes, everything shifts, everything changes. I believe in the power of binding and loosening that God wants to empower you and activate you in this tool. And in, in, in biblical times, in, in 
rabbis would use this term for, for a, a doctrine and what's permitted and what's not. And that's what you'd see. They'd get all ticked off at Jesus when, when he would heal on the Sabbath. Like, what? This, there are not six days. You should be healed on one of them, not on the Sabbath day. So they were binding things that they had no business binding. So Jesus countered that. And he goes to the woman who has bent over for 18 years and says, woman, you are loosed from that spirit of infirmity. So there's a shifting that God wants you to do, that, that is, this is not a place of asking God, but it's declaring. It is loosening what needs to be loosed. It is freeing what needs to be freed. It is binding in the works of the enemy. And God has empowered you, friends, to do that today, to do that in this time. So would you stand to your feet right now? And your I would say this, your, your first step, to being activated in kingdom power and authority is have you asked Jesus to be Lord of your life? Have you asked Jesus to be your king? This is your day, friends, to be activated in kingdom realities. And in just in a moment, I'm going to have Pastor Kenny come and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna lead you through a prayer that we're all going to pray together of just getting activated in these kingdom realities. Now, we... This is, there's also a second group of people. You have operated in bold prayers. You've operated in power and authority. But how many of you know that perhaps there's a little bit more? Perhaps there's another level. I believe that God wants to activate you. So would you turn to your left and turn to your right? Put your hands on your neighbor and let's, let's activate one another today in this next level of power, this next level of authority. Would you repeat after me? Say, Father, I declare today that I am activated in your power, your authority. When I pray, your power is released. And I declare over my friends, you are activated in kingdom realities. You are appointed. I declare you are activated in a new level of power and authority that when you declare, you will see change happen. Strongholds will come down. Father, I thank you that you are sending us into our territories to advance your kingdom and destroy the works of the devil. And if you believe that, would you give Jesus a shout? Thanks for listening. To find out more about our locations, team, and what we do here at Awakened Church, go to awakenedchurch.com.